So Formula One racing is massive in South Africa, but Derek, for those who are uninitiated, perhaps you can capture it in a nutshell for us. What is it all about? Kale, it's the speed, the smell, the whine of engines, which you would love, rivalry of teams and drivers, passionate fans, the unexpected results because they crashes and intrigues on race weekends. It's all the things local fans are eager to see in action firsthand. Twenty starters in the South African Grand Prix at East London. South Africa has a rich history in motorsports. Richie Ginter's BRM overtakes a South African entered Alpha Special. East London hosted the South African Grand Prix from the early 1930s to the mid-60s here at the Prince George circuit. Jim Clark, the first driver ever to win seven world championship events in one season. And look at that, it's all happening here at Kyle Army. The event moved to the historical Kyle Army circuit in the late 60s with the last South African Formula One race held here in 1993. History might soon repeat itself. Almost 30 years after the last Formula One Grand Prix in South Africa, glimpses of Formula One returning to the nation. There are heavy rumours that suggest the South African Grand Prix will be returning at no better place than Kyalami. This is Hammond's Kraal, about an hour's drive north of Pretoria. Right here, there's a passion for speed that would rival the fans at any Formula One track around the world. Dumalan. Morning, morning, morning. Hey, the guy. The guy. Yeah, it's Hendrik. Hendrik. Yeah, Hendrik. How are you doing? How fine and you? I'm Derek. Um, yeah, I'm Hendrik, the artist. Hendrik Chibanga discovered he had a talent for art 14 years ago. When Hendrik first heard about the possibility of Formula One returning to South Africa, he jumped at the opportunity to create something special to demonstrate his love for F1. Yeah. Wow, Hendrik. Yeah. Can I hold it? Like this. So you Hamilton fan? Yes, yes, I, <laughs> I love you. And where did your love for racing and Formula One start, Hendrik? Ah, uh, since I was a small boy, huh? we used to, to make wire cars and do some races. Are you keen for a Formula One race in South Africa? Yes, I heard that is coming to, to South Africa. It's going yeah. to be amazing if I just touch it, the real one. If I... you, would, you would just love that? Yeah, I would love that. Yeah. Hendrik is certainly not the only person wishing that Formula One would make a return to South Africa. Sir Lewis Hamilton, a current F1 driver and seven-time Drivers' World Champion, has voiced his opinion on racing in South Africa many times. Lewis loves South Africa and, and, and feels very emotional about South Africa. I think it would be a great shame and remiss of Formula One if we don't go back to South Africa during Lewis's active uh, time in Formula One. Peter Windsor is a Formula One journalist and former team manager. He started reporting on F1 back in the 70s. He shares his memories of his very first visit to Johannesburg. And then we walked out of the reception area and there were Mario Andretti, Clay Regazzoni, Peter Shetty, Jackie Stewart, Francois Seba, all sitting around by the pool. And they were all incredibly nice. You know, I can't even imagine anything like that happening today. My, most of my memory, obviously, is with the original Kyle Army. Compared with anything else on the calendar, it was unique. It had its own atmosphere. It had its own characteristic. I would love to see South Africa back on the calendar. And I think I speak for many people in Formula One when I say that. Lauda, Mansell, Senna, Schumacher, and our own Jody Schechter. So many world champions and famous names have raced here at Kyle Army. But that was decades ago. So now imagine Verstappen, Leclerc, Hamilton, you name it, right here on the starting grid. I think it would be a tad noisier.
It's not great news at this moment because the prospect of South Africa hosting a Formula One race next year is gone. South Africa have become more uncertain. Kyle Army won't be happening next year. There won't be a race for 2023. The facilities there, the infrastructure of South Africa is ready for it. Despite what anybody else can say, we can host this thing. Um, and the people are extremely excited. Sasha Martininga, a veteran of the broadcast industry, would love nothing more than to see the prancing horse take to Kyle Army. We got 60,000 people that can fit into Kyle Army. I can guarantee that at least 25,000 of those, or even more, would come from probably Europe, United States, even Australia. And they're not going to just spend three days here. No. They're going to spend two weeks here. That money is going to filter into our economy, putting us back on the map in a much more positive light. But getting onto that map doesn't come cheap. So is it worth the cash we'd have to cough up? The fees South Africa has to pay in order to host the race is unknown. According to reports, other countries have paid Formula One anything between 15 to more than 50 million dollars. It is expensive and it's got to be funded correctly to make sure that it continues. Toby Fent is the owner of Kyle Army Grand Prix Circuit. A racer by heart, he's been hard at work to try and bring Formula One back to South Africa. He took me for a few laps around Kyle Army. Grand Prix will be great for the country. The, the business model is difficult, and a lot of uh, governments do support the Grand Prix mm. uh, with funding because it benefits the country as a whole. Uh, in, the, in this case, uh, we haven't been able to secure government funding. The government has got other difficulties and priorities, but we hope that we can put a consortium mm. of promoters and investors together to ensure that we do actually get a Grand Prix in the future. But we need an international investor and an international sponsor to get the, the benefit. For anything to happen of this magnitude, the cash doesn't come overnight. People need to budget. Miguel Tiago is a supersport commentator and represents the FIA in Africa. The FIA is the governing body for multiple motorsport events, including Formula One. The promoters are something that the FIA don't specifically like to get involved with because they have to go hand in hand with the government. So it's a question of the government and the promoters being on the same frequency because the rest has happened already. The rest is in place. And we're looking specifically for a promoter, for someone who's come in for two, three years so that uh, Formula One can stay in Africa for as long as possible. How motivated are you to see um F1 Grand Prix right here. I'm very motivated and I do believe we will see a Grand Prix here one day. People are uh, hoping for uh, 2024. I'm also hoping for 2024. Uh, as we speak, the talks are taking place in London and uh, hopefully in the next couple of weeks we'll, we'll hear good news. We asked a few South Africans for their thoughts on Formula One in Africa. Pushing this out to 24 allows us as South Africa, as a country and as a community to truly galvanize, promote the race and put on something that's going to be absolutely world class and spectacular in the way that we know how. It's going to have a socio-economic impact, obviously, maybe good and bad. You know, do we have the infrastructure? Should we be spending the money on something else? Should we be focusing on something else? But then you've got to think of that flip side of the coin, you know, how many people it's going to attract to our country, how many jobs it's going to create. It will basically be the best advertisement to the largest audience that we could ever imagine our, our, our country reaching. And I, I just don't see how, how that could be a bad thing. I'm really excited um, for the F1 potentially coming to Africa, South Africa. I think for Africa as a whole is going to be quite exciting. Once we can get the government to assist, that's where you'll be able to get a few low-income earners who really love the sport to come and witness this. So it looks like we won't be hearing lights out and away we go in South Africa next year. But 
Hendrik and so many other passionate fans must be hoping, even praying, that we'll hear the roar of Formula One engines in 2024. Thanks for watching. Why not drop us a comment below? We love reading your opinions. Remember, you can now access Carte Blanche stories anytime, anywhere, even offline. Carte Blanche, the podcast, is now available on all major podcast platforms. So be sure to hit that follow or subscribe button and be part of our growing online family.